Hey, it's Zach from Dystopian Dance Party, and it has been almost a year since I visited Lucky Records in Reykjavik, Iceland. Now, why have I not just put this video on the shelf? Part of it is because I'm a pack rat and uh, I need content, and part of it is because I was so impressed with Lucky Records that I really feel the need to do this video. It's one of the biggest record stores I've ever been in. It's one of my favorite record stores I've ever been in. And uh, so let's let's just do it. Let's get this out of the way so I can get to all of the other, you know, uh, piles of videos that I recorded in the all 11, almost 12 months since I took this trip to Iceland. So belated, but uh, hopefully it'll be worth the wait. Lucky Records, as you can see, is a huge store right around the corner from the Iceland Phallological Museum, actually. So if you want to look at some dicks and also buy some albums, this is a great place. We're doing a slow pan across the room. You can see how big it is. And my favorite thing is there was there were rock records, but a lot of R&B. We've got Tina Turner, Ike and Tina here. We have uh, Carl Carlton, of course. The one with She's a Bad Mamma Jamma. And then we have uh, Carl Douglas. Uh, there's some weird ones too. Here's Boogie Down, not to be confused with uh, the group with KRS-One. They're more naked. A um, couple of, you know, really obscure kind of 70s soul groups. And obviously I had to show Blowfly. I don't know what this next record is, except it seems to be about race relations. And uh, all I can say is that's probably European, this one here. Uh, and this one, if anyone from Europe can explain what that is, let me know. But my favorite had to be Booty People. You got the cover, you got songs, Slapping Five. They're on a boat to Booty Land. There's a lot to unpack. We're looking right now at the back room, which is where all of the hip-hop 12 inches are. Uh, that lady got in my shot. But um, uh, it's just a great store. So much to look at. It's awesome. So, um, as I mentioned, there was a huge selection of 45s, uh, not 45s, of 12 inches. Um, so, the first one I picked up <laughs> is this. This is this, um, the 12 inch for On Our Own, Bobby Brown song from the Ghostbusters 2 soundtrack. <laughs> three versions. Yeah, three versions. You got the extended <laughs> club version, the radio edit, and then the regular the edit. Soundtrack the soundtrack version. The soundtrack version. Um, <laughs> I have a slightly controversial opinion that Ghostbusters 2 is the better Ghostbusters and I strongly think that uh, this song has a lot to do with it. <laughs> also probably because Ghostbusters 2 came out when I was actually able to understand movies and Ghostbusters 1 came out when I was like two years old. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I'm glad to pick that up. The extended club version is six and a half minutes long. So. You gotta show the back cover. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard the club version. Just the, the yellow He suit. probably just raps. Like, yeah, yeah. The same rap over and over again. <laughs> the um, other single that I picked up was The Men All Pause by Climax. Um, I really enjoy Climax. Zach has described them as the female time. And it's so accurate because all their songs are just like theatrical. There's a lot of talking in the songs and drama. But mm -hmm. The Men All Pause is a really great what would you call the style of this song? I mean, I would call it Jerry Curl music, um, but um, you know, it's just sort of like that that sort of Minneapolis-y like '80s funk with synthesizers. It, kind, it sounds kind of like I don't think this one was. So most of Climax's stuff was either produced by um, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis did a few of them. Um, the uh, the um, Calloway brothers from Midnight Star, later of Calloway, uh, I Want to Be Rich fame. Um, they Who did... I thought had one white guy and one black guy <laughs> in their brothers. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know <laughs> they, they did some stuff for them. So yeah, it's just that, it's just that 80s, um, it, it's that 80s funk, you know, um, which is, uh, it, it sounds like a Jerry Curl to me, so I call it Jerry Curl music. We are that 80s funk. We were born in the 80s. Um, the other things I picked up, full albums I picked up are, uh, continuing on the Bobby Brown kick, uh, Don't Be Cruel by Bobby Brown. This is not his debut solo album, I don't think, but... Um, it might as well be. It <laughs> might, exactly, it might as well be. Who gives a shit about anything else he's ever done? Um, 
uh, on our own, the song from the Ghostbusters soundtrack honestly sounds like it could have been a, a, a cutting a cutting room floor. Or a, what do you call it? Not cutting room outtake. floor. Outtake. An outtake. Yeah. From this album. Yeah, he just um, added the rap about Vigo. <laughs> <laughs> this is um, New Jack Swing, I guess. Yeah. Um, it's really good. All of the um, L.A. and Babyface. Mm -hmm. All the up tempo singles on this are amazing. Don't be cruel. My prerogative. Every little step. Every little step is just so good. <laughs> um, I also picked up Stevie Wonder's Hotter Than July. Um, I, I'm a Stevie Wonder fan. I need to do more digging into his catalog. Like I have um, got songs in the key. Songs of life. in the key of That's life. A really good one. I, that was one of the first records I bought when I started doing these hauls and stuff. Um, so I picked this up while we were at Nice, and it was actually only ten. Um, ISK, which is like eight, eight, eight fifty. Yeah, plus. Um, it's a good price. I feel like, and it's got. Master Blaster on it, and it's got the black version of Happy Birthday on here. <laughs> if you are not familiar with it, look up black version of Happy Birthday. It was actually written um, for Martin Luther King when all the black people in the country were trying to get uh, Martin Luther King Day to be a holiday, mm -hmm. and that is what he wrote that song for, and it's awesome. <laughs> and the last thing I picked up at Lucky Records was another Queen record, Cheer Heart Attack. Um, so that makes four or five total for me. <laughs> Not, well, I bought three in Iceland, four or five total. Um, this has Killer Queen on it. Now I'm here. This is my era of Queen. Is this your era? Yeah, of this is my era. I really like, I really like the um, album art. The Stone Cold Crazy from the Encino Man soundtrack. Yikes. <laughs> Uh, I picked up again. Mine are a little bit goofy. Um, I actually. How dare you call that goofy? <laughs> Debarge, rhythm of the night. Um, uh, what I love about this is that it's. Um, it says right on the sleeve from Barry Gordy's *The Last Dragon*. Um, that's one of my favorite movies. Vanity in a dramatic role. <laughs> uh, Ty Mac, you know, like in a um, role, in a role, yeah, just <laughs> just Oscars all around, Oscar worthy <laughs> performances all around. Um, love that, and and just the it, it looks like they all stuck their fingers in sockets and their Jerry <laughs> curls just like went out of control. Like mine a little bit. <laughs> so uh, yeah, there's that. I picked up another 12 inch. This is actually I actually own. So I I already owned "We Don't Work for Free" by Grandmaster Flash, or I'm sorry, Grandmaster Melly Mel in the Furious Five. Um, I had the um, the original cover with the. Um, with the Sugar Hill Records, you know, that iconic sh blue Sugar Hill Records sleeve. Um, but when I saw this picture sleeve, I was like, I will buy this motherfucker again, just so I can have this image in my home. And this is probably, um, I don't know if Kia knows this yet, but this is probably going up in one of those frames in the background. You could probably put more up. I don't know if you guys can see. Um, <laughs> we have some album uh, cover art up in frames, like lame hipsters. Um, <laughs> And you know we kind of rotate them out, depending on you know every you know. I think the only thing that's been up there permanently, Sylvester, uh, Prince, and uh, Prince, Dirty Mind, and, and, and Rick James. James. I, I, I had this idea that I was going to do back covers of albums, um, but Dirty that's... Mind and, and Street Songs are like those are the best back covers. There's not really there's, yeah. there are many that stand up to that. So one last record. This is a weird one. I had to get it. Even though I was in Iceland, I felt like I should get something that I that I don't usually see in America. So I ended up buying a Japanese record, so figure that out. It's a band called Loudness. Uh, and they're basically, I listened to them, um, I think there's a little bit of footage of me discovering them uh, on, the, on the listening station. It's like a Japanese Motley Crue. This is kind of awesome. They sound like a um, like a Japanese Motley Crue, and they look like a Japanese Motley Crue. And um, yeah, I mean, I don't know enough about this record to know like it, would it be easy to find in the states? Probably, but I saw it and it called to me. And um, I'm sorry, Iceland, I didn't buy any of your your yeah. <laughs> native well, music. Look, I tried to buy some Bjork, and it was crazy expensive. It was all newer uh, Bjork, like not used stuff in her newer records. And Bjork is all about crazy special editions yeah. and stuff. Um, and they were like 50 ISK, which would have been like 45 US bucks. And I'm like, I don't like these newer Bjork records enough to get 
these special editions and never played them. Like right. they didn't have any like debut or post. I did. I think I did see in somewhere uh, a copy of either like a um, a reissue of debut or post. Um, but it was it was expensive. It was very expensive. So I figured I would just try to find those here in the states when we go crate digging. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll be back with another trip to the Recosto on dystopiandanceparty.com very soon. Yeah, I think this is going to be another one of those fun.